Good afternoon, welcome to um, Long Wanderer Bushcraft Channel, part two of the Groman knife. Um, part one is really um, just to say the problems that I had with this knife, uh, which is manufacturing problems, not um, problems uh, using it in the field. So if you've not watched that, then obviously watch that first before this one then you'll know the problems that I had with this so this is part two where I'm just going to be um, it's not going to be a full-on review it's just more of the first impressions of um, the issues that I had in part one and do I do I still like it after the issues um, I don't know we'll find out um, this is a close-up of the sheath so she's got the Groman label there um, nothing does the job nothing too glamorous um, my personal opinions I think they could have done a better job on the sheath but it does the job one of the things I don't like about the sheath um, is this here now the sheath that came with this before the older sheath which is what they call the army, uh, Canadian army um, sheath, uh, which is like, it's basically a full enclosure. So basically you had a flap that comes over the handle and then buttons in here. And, uh, but they, apparently they don't make that anymore. And you can only get it from the um, Groman stores in Canadian, America. Um, <laughs> And again, I'm not paying a fortune just to get that sheath. So I'll either make one myself or get one of the um, leather guys I know to make me a sheath for this. Only if I like it. So yeah, sheath, it does its job, but it's nothing fancy. Um, stitching is basic. Um, looks like they use some sort of um, sewing or looks like, actually, looks like they've used some sort of speedy stitcher because these, what you call lock stitches, and those usually uh, can be only done with a, a sewing awl or a speedy stitcher. So obviously what you do, you clamp this in a clamp, you stick the oil, the oil, stick the sewing awl in, and then obviously thread it through, and then take the needle out, and then you obviously tighten a knot with your fingers, pull it tight, and that's what's called a lock stitch. Um, it's what I do myself when I'm doing basic leather repairs uh, or repairs to my kit. But anyway, so um, yeah, so problem um, number one is the sheath, um, and I'm not the only one with this problem. Um, everyone on YouTube uh, pretty much does not like the sheath either. Now, why they would get rid of the original sheath for this, I have no idea, because it worked uh, and it looks a hell of a lot better than what this is. So, um, I don't like the way the knife handle sticks out there um, above, the, above the loop. Um, I would prefer full enclosure for the handle to protect the handle because obviously it's carbon steel. Um, the car too doesn't really matter, it's good for all weathers, but uh, obviously you've got the tang exposed uh, and this is carbon steel not stainless steel um, this obviously the leather loop goes through a, a little slit there and obviously I will prefer if that was stitched in place if I'm honest I can see in the long run this this hole opening up and probably this loop coming undone so I don't like that either but the main thing that I don't like about the sheath, and everybody is in the same boat as me, is the retention strap there. Look where this retention strap is. Okay, so you button the retention strap, look where it is. On exactly the same size as the blade. And I hate, it's one of my pet hates, is I really don't like retaining straps on the same side as the blade. Um, and you'll see why, okay? So, as you pull, if this was on your sign, on your belt, as you pull it out, okay, now eventually, that, you can see it already, you can see it, can you see it cutting into the leather, as I'm drawing it out, okay, 
Now that eventually is going to cut the whole thing off. So why the hell would they put a retention strap on the same side as the, the edge? Doesn't make sense. Why not go with the original sheath to this? Uh, to this knife? Uh, why change it to this one? Which is totally unnecessary. You know, um, if you're going to do something, make it better, not worse. So what they've done is made the sheath a lot worse than um, the army style one, which is the full cover sheath. That would have been a lot better if they stayed, uh, and I did request that um, in Colonial Outdoors, and they said they don't make it anymore, and they don't have any in stock either, and I'd have to order it from the Groman in in Canada, which obviously I'm not going to do that. So yeah, why would you put a retaining strap on the same side as the edge? Uh, doesn't make sense. So the more times I draw that out and put it back in again, the more it's going to um, slice into there. It's absolutely ridiculous. And as you're drawing it from your side, you can put your finger there to push it back and then draw it, but then you've got the risk of cutting your finger while doing that. So yeah, this sheath, um, this sheath design, my opinion, garbage. Um, it's well made, but the theory and design behind it, it does not make sense to me whatsoever, and don't like it. And I will be, uh, if I like this knife, get on with this knife, I'll be either repairing it, uh, modifying it, or making another one, or get somebody else to do it. But anyway, that's the sheath, garbage. Right. So, um, was it worth, if you see my video part one, was it worth the repairs and the modification I did to the edge? We'll find out. So, <coughs> so I'm going to get a stick here. Um, I might actually just cut by him. Give me a second. I was going to do this before the video, but me being me, I forgot all about it. Okay, so. <clears throat> so, like I say, we've got a carbon steel blade. Um, it's five inches long. Uh, the car to handle scales, full tang, three brass rivets. So, I'm doing this very quickly so that the video isn't about two hours long. You have got a hole there for a lanyard. Um, it's about, I'd say it's about four millimeters in thick in thickness. Um, I don't actually know what carbon steel they use. Um, apparently, it's, it's pretty good, um, but it's really hard to find what Groman make their carbon steel out of because I keep hearing different things. Because apparently. Uh, it's different from one website to the other what the what the steel is actually made from so carbon steel I have absolutely no idea um, so let's say you can have a stainless steel or carbon steel which is what this one is and um, they do a variety of different handles they do um, stag macarta which is what this one is they do uh, rosewood um, and um, a kind of uh, kind of resin wood as well um, which I'm not too sure what that is um, and uh, and it's got a very unusual shape to it um, which is what Groman um, knives are famous for that shape it's almost like a, a Nesmuk style um, but obviously not as wide as a Nesmuk handle first impressions on the handle feels relatively comfortable but um, the handle, although it's Makata, there is no grip there, and I can see this slipping out my hand if I did some um, light chopping with it, you know, for chopping saplings and things like that. Um, I would have liked it to be textured Makata um, rather than this rather being smooth. Um, so yeah, I'm not really keen on the, the Makata on the handle. Maybe I should have gone with the wood. Maybe that would have been more grip. I'm not too sure. Um, we've got jimping on the back of the spine here. And that's quite aggressive. Um, so it, 
if you rub your thumb up and down this jimp in here um, it will make your will hurt your thumb it will probably cause a blister but um, the jimping is not really there um, as such to stop your thumb from moving um, up and down it's there to obviously put your thumb in one fixed position to stop it from moving from that um, from the spine okay so so yeah um, when you're doing delicate work that jimping is quite quite aggressive so that's something to bear in mind if you want to get one of these knives the spine is quite sharp as well um, which I'll probably demonstrate doing some uh, shaving some bark off this stick um, I'm not going to make anything today um, out of bushcraft I'm just going to give you a quick a very quick insight to what this blade is if you've been um, on the back line for a while like I was um, and wondering whether or not you're going to take the plunge and buy one so yeah uh, there's the basic specs uh, obviously you've got this kind of drop point there which is like reinforced so uh, you can easily quite put your thumb there for delicate work uh, maybe for, for skinning delicate work with the wood which I'll demonstrate um, so yeah um, first impressions of the knife not with the problems um, pretty good um, I'd say apart from the jimping I think the jimping could have been probably a little bit less aggressive um, won't uh, matter so bad if you're wearing gloves but obviously if you're not using gl wearing gloves, so I don't really tend to wear gloves when I'm using knives, but it, it's very aggressive. Um, so I can see this making my thumb quite sore after a while, but the the kind of cut out there, it's almost like a choil, so you can really, really choke up on this thing. That's one thing that first attracted me to this knife, is, is the shape of it and the ability to choke up there. So, um, let's give it a whirl. Sorry if I don't talk sometimes, I'm just trying to concentrate on what I'm doing. <laughs> so I say it's just a first impression really. Okay, so oh forgot to mention the grind, do apologize. Yeah, the grind uh, comes in two different grinds. It comes in either a flat grind or a sabre grind, which is what this is. Um not really over uh, keen on the flat grind, so I went for the sabre grind. Um but to be honest with you, this I don't know if you can tell on camera but it's not really a deep um, sabre grind it's um, it's a high sabre grind which is what sabre grind should be but it's not very deep it's almost um, a cross between a flat grind and a sabre grind it's really hard to pick up on my phone so obviously I use my finger for scale so I'm going to rub my finger on the shoulder bit here it's like a really really weak sabre grind um, and it doesn't feel like a sabre grind it just looks and feels uh, like a flat grind so it's kind of cross between the two but they said it's a sabre grind so uh, we'll go with that um, slicing ability um, this is ash uh, kind of dead ash so it's going to be rock hard a little bit it's not um, it's not green wood so but I like to test all my knives on like hardwoods and things um, so if it does well on hardwood then it should quite easily be good at green wood as well so yeah not too bad slice is not 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 too bad actually slice is pretty well don't know if I can um, try and get it on camera you know but I'm not the world's best cameraman, so come on guys, give me a break. <laughs> okay. So if I've got like wood bits of wood flying at my phone. So yeah, um actually it's not a bad slicer, to be fair. Not bad, not bad at all. Say this is hard wood. Um if it was green wood it'd be even better. But well, the grind is not doing bad so far. Doing the job, as they say. It does its job. 
And so I just want to get that bit off there because obviously that's where um, I snapped it in half um, to a decent size. I couldn't be bothered. I left my saw in my bag in my pack. I can't be bothered to get my saw out, so that's why I snapped it. So I need to get that bit off. So I'm going to do a chest lever cut. So I'm going to hold the the handle. I'm going to test the handle out now for um, comfort and ergonomics. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a chest lever. Not too sure what chest lever is. Um, see one of my previous videos on my channel and I explain what chest lever is and um, how to do it okay so I'm going to hold it like this with it thumb there supporting well away from the edge I'm going to hold it to about here and one of the things it's important to note that with the chest lever you're not moving your knife hand okay because that actually makes it harder okay what you're doing is you're moving the wood okay so sometimes when it looks like I'm moving a knife I'm actually moving the wood uh, if you get me that's a lot easier so the only thing I'm doing with the knife is I'm doing a kind of twisting motion with the knife so I'm, but I'm not actually moving it side to side the only thing that's moving is the stick from side to side with this I'm just getting the right angle so I'm getting a feel for the knife because obviously this is the first time I've ever used it that's why I always say, try and find out, uh, try and use different knives with different grinds because it just adds to the experience. Okay, so so yeah, it's not doing a bad, bad job. Um, had better, felt better, does feel a bit weird because of that shape. So I'm just angling the knife away from me, away from my face, and getting this bit off. Now bear in mind, it started the video, I said that this is hard ash, so it's not green wood. Um, this has been sitting out for a while, and it is, it's like concrete, it's rock hard. So if you're wondering why it's taking a long time to just to do this, that's why. <laughs> it's just not my technique, it's the wood. So I'll go back to this grip now, and I've taken most of the wood off. And we'll just, just trim that little bit edge there but yeah it's not doing a bad job um let's test the jimping out on the spine yeah that's it uh, that jimping's really aggressive I can really feel that in the thumb probably see my thumb there look see the two lines the teeth that's what it does to your thumb yeah so I would say when you're doing things like this, um, don't put your thumb there when you're carving. Um, so I think I'm going to change my grip and just go like this to get the remainder off of here. And I'll show you that probably where sometimes jimping does come into its own, but it certainly doesn't go into its own like this. And in my experience, it doesn't really. Um, it's not really to be used like that because that's where the friction builds up on your thumb especially if it's really really um, aggressive like this is so what jimping's really for is for fine detail work okay so it's like going up and down motion not really slicing motion okay I know I'm waffling on but uh, at least you know what I'm doing just before I get comments saying you're doing it wrong and all that kind of stuff well you know I'm doing it wrong then show me a video and uh, show me why or tell me why I'm doing it wrong okay so we've got some knots there let's go and see how it handles knots <sighs> struggles slightly a little bit Mm, does slice, I'll give him that, does slice, um, so we'll do a point, just carve a little bit of a point, you can probably hear how hard this wood is from the video, it's 
getting spooky these woods so I'm always looking around um, every little sound that you hear I'm just spinning around expecting somebody to sneak up behind me one day <laughs> but I'm paranoid the, the best of times so it doesn't really help really does it but yeah um, got a point um, so yeah it does the job um, it certainly can slice so let's see what she's like at notching okay so as if you wanted to use this as a temp peg uh, so again I've got videos on notching if you want to know what notching is and what it's used for and how to do it so I'm going to put just put the straight edge bit of the knife on the piece of wood and I'm going to just press down with my finger with a thumb maybe just rock it just a little bit just to get that sabre grind to bite into the wood like this then this is where the gym pin comes into its own so then you put your thumb on that gym pin there choke up on the blade so a really really nice grip on the blade your thumbs in place on the gym pin so it's not going to fall slip sorry and to work towards that stop cut there you can use your thumb uh, your other thumb as well if need be just to guide um, so what you're doing is basically a push cut with your thumb and because of the aggression of this spine here this jimping um, your thumb doesn't want to slide at all it's just fixed in place but um, I wish that they didn't make it as aggressive as this because after a while if you're not wearing any gloves like me it will hurt and it will be quite sore so no matter how seasoned your hands are like mine um, it will still hurt you okay so okay so it bites in okay if it was green awards it'd probably bite in a lot better but um, as I already know before I even use the knife because of the grind on it um, it's not so much the sabre grind that's on it it's the secondary um, bevel uh, the secondary micro bevel there on the edge um, I generally don't like them because it really interferes with your carving it really does interfere with your carving um, a lot of knives these days have got that secondary bevel because um, obviously uh, it adds strength to your blade but it does impede on carving quite a lot so that's why I don't like them but it does the job definitely does the job see how deep we can go with my push cut with my thumb keep trying keeping it as level as I can biting deeper and deeper it's not doing a bad job usually with the marker bevels it's this part getting the wood out is the problem with what you have with marker bevels if it was a a zero scandy or um, hollow grind or something like that um, then it'd be a lot easier but she she has done it so she has removed it, not all of it, but that's probably down to my error, not the knife. But let's get it out of it. See what I mean about the noise? We've got a lot of leaves and twigs in these woods, and um, basically, every time I hear the leaves rustle on the ground, uh, I think somebody's coming in the woods. <laughs> but nine times out of ten you get a lot of birds and pigeons and things and birds of prey and squirrels in this wood so nine times out of ten it's going to be them not heard much today in these woods um, 
as I said before, these woods, um, it's got a trail, which is only about 10 meters from here. So sometimes I have to be really quiet. So I don't want to give my location away because sometimes when I'm doing bushcraft and things, people get the wrong impression. Um, but that's a tale for another day. But all in all, this is not done bad. Quite good. Um, and like I say, this is seasoned hard ash. Um, and if this was green wood, you make a tent peg out of green wood, it'd be even better. This knife would definitely excel at that if it was green wood. Um, struggles a bit with hard wood, but it, it still did it. So, um, not bad at all. So, um, put the thumb back of there, let's have a go at that. Let's try and make that a little bit rounder, a bit more deeper. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the tip this time. I'm gonna put my thumb there, right on the spine here. Let's see how, uh, how that performs. Yeah, that's uh, pretty, pretty good. Because um, of the angle of this blade and the way it's shaped, especially this bit here, and obviously you're jimping, and here as well, um, I like bushcraft knives or survival knives that I can really um, choke upon and get really close to my work. And this is exceptional for that, absolutely fantastic for that. For, so for detail work on woods, carving notches and things then, this is right up my street. And which is usually a good thing for me, as far as first impressions go. Now, I do apologise, um, I can quite easily make this video into three parts. Um, so I know people that's watching is probably going to get bored, but um, today I actually can't be bothered just to mess about with the camera, so I'm just going to leave the video running. Um, if, if you just want to um, put it on pause and watch the rest of it later, put it on your watch list, or um, if you've got a program you want to watch on telly, because this video is too long, then I do apologise. Uh, you can always come back to it later and finish off the rest of the video like I do sometimes on people's videos that's like 45 minutes uh, or an hour, over an hour sometimes. But I could, really can't be bothered today guys to mess about with camera and then doing part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4. Um, so I'm just going to leave it, this part 2 running. I only want this video to be two parts. But yeah, that's really, 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 really good. Really good. really comes into its own but a uh, this spine the shape of the spine you can see why the um, Canadians um, like this like this knife um, originally um, a knife such as this would be would have been issued to Canadian forces but not this knife um, it would do the original knife that was issued to Canadian forces the key Canadian Army was um, a lot smaller than this. Um, this is like the bigger version, uh, the survival um, number four version. Um, but they still do, still make the, um, the original design of the, the Canadian Army version. Um, but so bear in mind it is smaller than this. It's like a larger version of that, really. More, I won't say heavy duty because it's not really a heavy duty knife. Um, I won't class a knife that's only four millimeters um, thickness, heavy duty, really. Um, don't know about you. So I'm just going to tidy this up and then just really, really get a feel for this knife. Um, this is what I like to do with long-term reviews. Um, sometimes I like to take this with me to the woods or different locations and for a few weeks and try it out and at least give it the chance it deserves before I make a final conclusion so some more of the first impressions 
and I'll probably do a long term review if I decide to like it um, but we'll see so yeah I've gone a little bit deeper um, rounded it off with a thumb on the back of the spine perfect for that kind of work for delicate details in wood carving absolutely perfect um, but I think that's down to the shape that you can really really choke up on it you've got the jimp in there to stop your thumb from sliding off in that direction um, this flat bit here behind uh, it's almost like a chisel chiseled spine um, really excels at um, push cuts with your thumb without it slipping off so the as far as carving is concerned this design works quite well and um, this shape um, so what we'll do now let's have a look uh, we'll go for more slicing now so okay, so like I said this feels gonna be long I can't be bothered to switch it off and do part one two three and whatever so I'm just gonna leave it running uh, it's up to you if you want to watch it or not. <laughs> okay, so I've got this stick here that can test its slicing ability even more. Um, probably hear that snap. So yeah, um, probably probably hear that snap. Um, so see what it's like just um, I'm just messing about a bit today guys so don't expect me to make tables and things today because that said can't be bothered today it's just first impressions sorry to keep repeating myself but it's just getting a feel for it that's what it is today okay so choose a side I'm just gonna test that whole belly um, in slicing so and for this this will test the handle to see if the handle is comfortable for long periods so I'm going to do it in the, the typical um, strong overhand grip uh, your thumb tucked away there and you want to grip it relatively tight not too tight and then use the whole belly so if you've got a relatively long knife, and I've seen this a lot, um, especially even if you've got a four inch bushcraft knife, wood or something like that, okay? When you're slicing, use the whole blade, okay? So use the whole um, length of the blade to your advantage, okay? Um, far too often, I see people making, making it look like it's um, more wear than it actually is because they only use like one part of the blade when they slice and they'll probably do something like that which is fine if you want to do some delicate tasks and yeah there's a reason why you've got to do that but if you're just removing bark or just trimming the stick down to size then use the whole blade okay so this is about five inch blade so I'm going to be because of that slicing that, that belly there that sweeping belly I'm going to use that whole sweeping belly to my advantage so I'm going to hold it like this and I'm going to slide it use the whole belly that's what it's there for okay and yeah it does it quite well if I'm honest okay slicing um, pretty fantastic not the best but it's it's quite good um handle scales mmm hot spots there the red and that's why I always do different tests because if you're going on a long camping trip or a long buscraft trip and you only take your one knife with it or um, maybe a backup knife and a knife such as this um, one of my criteria I don't know about yours but one of my criteria is the handle the ergonomics of the handle it needs to be perfect because if you're doing bushcraft or even teaching survival and things like that um, especially well especially if it's you're teaching bushcraft or survival to maybe let's just say a large group of people or kids or something like that and the chances are you're going to be using a knife like this all day long 
teaching kids and then you might have um, a break in between but then you'll, you'll be teaching more people after that. So chances are well, you'll be using this all day. So ergonomics of the handle is, to me, is very important on a bushcraft knife, survival knife or any knife really. Um, and straight away within maybe the first 30 seconds, I'm getting hot spots on my palms. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So I'm gonna carry on slicing, see how long it takes for to get down to a point. Again, I keep saying this, um, it's gonna be a long video guys. I do apologize in advance, but I'm not messing around today. So if you wanna switch off, then switch off. But, but if you're really interested about the ergonomics of this knife, uh, then, then please carry on watching. And then my conclusion will be at the end. So I'm using the whole belly, as you can see, starting low and sweeping the whole belly all the way almost to the tip area. And I was discussing this with a friend, with a good friend of mine, um, who lives out in Scotland, who is a, a absolute knife fanatic and nut like me, but at, um, as well as that, he really knows um, what he's doing when it comes to survival knife and he even designs his own and use them very very hard as survival knives should be and I was in a conversation with him the other day and I'm now turning as far as bushcraft concerned I'm now turning slightly to turn from using a straight bushcraft blade to kind of a semi curved bushcraft blade like this so I'm leaning more towards this kind of shape not this knife in particular, but another knife that I've got, which I will do a video on. Um, because it really does come into its own when, you, when you're slicing. If you have to remove a lot of materials, I find that using a, a curved blade with um, quite a curved belly, as well as starting off straight, you could remove a lot more materials um, than with a straight edge and that's what I said to him the other day um, so yeah in no time at all done the point um, no problem at all um, so let's see um, you could quite easily trim this down with a saw um, if you feel it's too long but me being me to test the knife even more I'm going to trim this stick down with just my knife um, I'm going to do what I uh, don't know the proper term for it but I've, I've named it a beaver cut <laughs> which basically you go round and round in circles like a beaver does on the tree uh, and then eventually you just snap it off in half you've, you've seen me probably do it quite a few times in the videos um, so I'm probably going to trim it off to about here uh, so no chopping yet so use my thumb I'm going to just go around. You spin me right here, baby, right around. Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm going round and round and around with my knife, all the way around in a circle. And then I'm going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And then once it's ready to break, you snap off, which I'll show you. Um. And I do this quite a lot. Um. Yes, I can use a saw, but with it. With something this thick, um, I like to use a knife because it gets me um, to learn the it gets me to kind of learn the ergonomics of the knife I'm using. B, it conditions it conditions your hands really really well, which is what you need uh, for this kind of work, um, and it tests the the edge geometry as well. So sometimes. It's not a bad thing to do things the hard way if you want to do a review of a knife rather than taking the easy way out and just using the saw and cut it in half. So let's just say you haven't got a saw, you left it at home and this is all you've got. This is exactly what you need to be doing. Um, yes, you can probably use your 
break it with your foot, but where's the fun in that? That's the, I can if you're not in a rush that's kind of the beauty of bushcraft is because um, listen to your surroundings listen to the birds singing and not rushing about and again I've seen a lot of videos where people are just you know I know that sometimes you're on a time limit and sometimes I am as well um, so I don't like my videos to be stupid long um, so I think this video I'm doing today is going to be the longest one I've done for a while um, which I'm again I'm sorry about but it is what it is today okay so that's about ready to break as you can see so I've gone around in a semicircle with my knife working around and around it's like a beaver would with his teeth and he's trying to cut a tree down okay so all you do is snap and you should have a clean break once you've done that okay um, so nice clean break and you just trim that edge off so again I can choke up on the knife if need be use the jimping that's provided on the, on the blade and just go around and I must admit when I first took this out of the box, and I'm not just saying about the um, the problems that I had with it, which um, is in part one. Um, normally, when you get the first a, a knife, a new knife, uh, and you guys watching this might be the same as me, um, is sometimes first impressions. You think I'm not going to get on with this knife. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the ergonomics, and I don't like the, the blade shape, the grind, or whatever. But sometimes, very rarely for me, because I always find something wrong with knives, or not just knives, with, with backpacks, with, with gear, you know, trousers, you know, jacket, anything. Um, maybe it's due to my mental health, I'm not too sure, but I'm very fussy. If I find something wrong, um, it's very likely that I won't be using it again, especially knives. If I don't like a knife and I don't get on with it, so the rest of the knife has got to impress the hell out of me if I find one thing wrong. So if you don't like the ergonomics and the handle, um, you better be sure that I like the blade, otherwise I'll just not use this knife ever again. It'll be in a drawer, maybe sell it or something like that, and then somebody else might um, buy this knife off me and they might even like it better than me. Because everybody's different, everybody's hand shape is different, different size. Um, I have kind of say medium to large hands, uh, so not extra large hands, I'd say probably medium to large. Um, it is a good size for me. I like that extra length in the handle, um, and I like the fact I can obviously choke up on the blade. So, yeah, um, like this so far. So, I'm just going to trim this off again, testing the sliceability, really getting a feel for it. So, if you're buying a knife for the first time, um, try not to dismiss it straight away. Take it out with you, try it out first, get to learn its shape, the way it cuts, the way the grind is. Um, learn what you can use it for and what you can't use it for, and what its capabilities are. So, um, the only thing I don't like about it so far, as I'm using it, as I'm talking to you guys, is um, A, the handle scales when I'm doing the um, heavy slicing jobs. Um, yeah, so, this is the problem I'm having is like a lot of knives or traditional kind of knives is this the handle scales here nicely rounded there but the corners here after a while that's what's going to cause hot spots in your hand 
okay so they really dig into your hand so I will definitely be rounding them off get some sandpaper wet and dry paper or something like that and I'll be rounding that off um, I don't like that after a while it's very uncomfortable um, and no matter what grip I'm using in one way or another these sharp corners are going to dig into your hand if you're wearing gloves fine you're not going to notice it but like me I hardly wear gloves and that will annoy me uh, very much after a while so yeah so first impressions um, well first complaint first con is the handle scales so yeah handle scales need rounding off definitely which I will be doing um, either when I get home or or probably not when I get home because it's probably going to be quite late but definitely probably tomorrow I've got some more modifications to do tomorrow and another new new knife that I've got in the tray to show you um, which I'll go on to another day because this video is already 46 minutes long and already I'm going to get the trolls the trolls are there on my channel you can't get away from them they are there ready to pounce on you Say, what can I say today to annoy Lee? Let's have a look. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why do you need to do this? Why is your videos like an hour long? Uh, why do you keep stroking your knife like this? You know, you, you get them, don't you? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't pay much attention to it, if I'm honest. But anyway, back to the knife. Okay, so. Um, start to the video. Um, this knife has got a very sharp spine. Um, which is weird, and you look at the shape of this knife and it doesn't look like it's gonna, it, because it's not straight, it doesn't look like it's not gonna have a sharp spine, but believe me, it is sharp. Um, I'm not gonna test it with a ferro rod because I know for a fact that this will strike a ferro rod because this is very sharp spine and a spine as sharp as this will definitely won't have any, no problems whatsoever striking a ferro rod. And uh, for the people that know me or watch my channel, um, they know that I don't, very rarely do I use a knife with a ferro rod, um, but I will um, if I absolutely need to. So um, all my knives, Buscroft knives, I like to have a 90 degree spine most of the time to uh, scrape fine shavings or scrape bark or similar, or even scraping birch bark uh, into a fine powder. Um, but in emergencies or um, let's say my I lose my striker from my ferro rod at least I know that I can strike with my knife if need be so let's just get rid of these notches uh, not sorry the stick um, and then we'll go on to do some scraping okay okay so green obviously I've took that bit off there but see it's all green all the way around it's ash, so the bark on ash is quite hard um, to get off the best of times. So it needs to have a really sharp spine to get bark off ash. But we'll see how we go. So I'm going to test it here just below the gym pin first. And we'll see how we go with that. Definitely works quite well. I'll show you when I've done. Once you get a feel for it and get the right angle, it does a really, really good job of that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely sharp. Sharp spine. So, okay, so that's what it looked like before, and that's what I've just done with my knife. So, no problems whatsoever scraping bark off a uh, stick tree, whatever. Um, but this area here, I mean this area here, uh, where the gym just have the gym pin, is sharp. However, there's an even sharper bit, which is just there. That's even sharper. So let's 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 lose, use that to do that bit there. So I'm gonna, because this is rounded here, I've got to take safety in consideration here. So rather than when I'm scraping bark, I usually put my thumb on the blade like this. Um, 
but if it's raining or my hands are sweating in especially in the, uh, the summer months your finger can thumb can quite easily um, slip off the blade which I have done in the past and got scars to prove it uh, so obviously slip off there and then catch your thumb um, so on that curve will probably um, my thumb will then probably slip in off this bit if I use this curved bit here it's not so bad here but if I want to use this bit here then what I'm going to do I'm just going to move further back on the handle and grip it like this because in order to use this bit I've got it rather than straight it's got to be at an angle <laughs> Wow, I wish, I wish you can do this yourself because I'm going to put my thumb on the handle here, not on the blade. Wow, that's even better for a scraping. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so this bit here is really good for scraping, it's really sharp, but this bit here, I don't know if it's intentional for whatever reason, but that is like a razor there, it's really really sharp spine there, just before um, this bit here where it starts to drop, drop down, this bit here is, is sharp, so I suppose if you're striking a ferro rod, you could probably choke up on it and then probably strike your ferro rod from that bit there because that's even sharper than what that is well both will do it um, I am glad that it does have a sharpened spine um, it just comes to show that these guys in Canada um, they know what they're doing when they make a, a small survival slash bushcraft knife um, so the uh, blade geometry um, like this because of the, the swing on the belly the sweep on the belly um, really really good for slicing 90 degree spine um, all the way up to there perfect for scraping fire um, your, your ferro rod or um, your bark off your sticks and things um, or even if you're make, making some cordage that would be good for that as well um, jimping on the spine uh, in my opinion it's, it doesn't need to be a uh, aggressive um, as this but it does the job and especially if it rains or your hands are sweaty that would come in handy um, love love the shape and ergonomics the you know, the shape of this blade um, really comes into its own very unique shape um, similar to a Nesmuk blade um, and um, like I said before at the start of this video I'm starting to lean towards um, blades this shape for bushcraft because I think they are way better than using a straight blade for bushcraft uh, in my opinion yeah so uh, geometry of this bit the blade fine um, awesome um, so I'm just going to do it just a quickly and a little notch Again, once you learn the ergonomics of the blade and you get used to it and you learn all the curves and the shape of what it's supposed to do and then it really puts a smile on your face, it really does. <laughs> well, Groman, uh, DH Russell, did pretty well designing this blade geometry. Fantastic for bushcraft tasks. Can't fault it at all for that kind of task. Um, I can see why they issued um, blades uh, like this for the Canadian Army because it really comes into its own for, for bushcraft tasks 
um, and skinning as well. Um, yeah, it's good for skinning as well. And that's why um, this kind of shape here so where it drops down there and here I don't think that's actually sharp but let's have a look yeah so this bit here where it drops when you've got the drop point there in the blade um, this is like a, a swedge um, but it's not sharp and I've put some real walking through the woods then. Very spooky ones these. Um, but yeah, the, the tip, this bit here on the swedge, um, it's not sharp. And um, after doing some research on it, there's a reason why it's not sharp down there. It's A, so you can put your thumb there for doing more delicate tasks. And B, um, when you're choking up on the blade for, for skinning or um, gutting fish and things like that, okay, you don't want your spine to be sharp you want it to be rounded because if this is going next to the the fish or whatever you're skinning you don't want to cause further damage okay so that's why this area here is important not to be sharp um, on the spine um, so when you're cutting fish or, or you care, need to carefully take skin off so you do it what you generally tend to do is called just have a little nick in the fur or or the fish belly of the fish and then you start to go work this way and when you work this way the skin or the, the the belly or the scale of the fish will be rubbing against the back spine of your knife which I will demonstrate one day because um, I've not done a video for years on how to prepare fish and to prepare fish properly and cook it um, but it really comes into its own um, this shape this round a bit here and that's why the a the Kephart blade works so incredibly well for that kind of task because of the um, the rounded spear point that the Kephart blade has and um, this is kind of similar and, and as are some nest mops are similar although this tends to be um, got a more much sharper point than the typical um, traditional Kephart style on the or the nest mop um, so again I've apologised um, quite a few times on on this po on this video uh, because we're now coming up to an hour. Um, but you know, I will do probably a part three. But the part three is going to be my um, impressions. Um, uh, the people who know me, uh, they know that um, I don't do. Uh, videos for profit. I don't do it for subscriptions or nobody sponsors me whatsoever um, so I Do it to try and help you guys out decide on the knives uh, or, or tips and tricks about bushcraft or using knives um, Which I'll be going into So I think what I am going to do I'm going to probably cut this video off um, and then probably will go on to a part, part three, where I'll do some light chopping and light batoning. Um, so this is purely for slicing. Um, <laughs> it's like kind of like, it's like I said, this is like semi green wood, um, but yeah, it's it's awesome slicer. Struggled a bit with the more. Um, harder drier wood as most knives will but for green wood or semi green wood which is what this is um, yeah it's good it is good and I've noticed as well when I choke up um, the closer I get to the blade the less it's hurting in my hand from the handle it's only when I'm doing the power strokes uh, where I have to ha hold the knife in the middle um, so the scales are kind of buried in my palm and that's when you feel how sharp it is so I think I think that's what I'm going to do probably tomorrow 
you know, shave this down a bit, this handle, um, round it off, I think. As you can see, good slicer. It's got stuck on knot then. Yeah, good slicer. So I'm going to cut the feed there because obviously we are now into an hour, um, and I think I will. I know I said I wouldn't, but I think I will break off now and do a part three I'm gonna have a break now uh, have a cup of tea uh, get set up for um, some more um, jobs for this knife the Groman knife I'm using on some some more typical bushcraft uh, stuff like uh, light batoning um, could be doing that and light chopping as well um, so I'm gonna cut the feed there see if my remote's working today and then I will see you in part three see you in part three